And I'm guessing these might be some questions that your kids want to know about you. So let's let's hear it. Let's let's who's got who's got the first question for me? Hey. Who's leading this interview here? You got the first one? Oh shit. So I personally created this one myself. What motivated you not to be like your father? I know that you said when you were growing up. You didn't want to be like your father. No. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you. I ain't never So let me break, 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 break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up. I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. or making me scared, I'm a little worried about this interview. Because oh, I have no clue what the questions are coming fun. up with. So why don't you tell them about what Breaking the Cycle is all about, Mitch? Well, Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive role model and lead your, and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry. That was, that was a mouthful. Mouthful. Slow that down a little bit there, Mumbler. I have this pencil because we're now reporters. You're Interviewing reporters? Mr. Freak Steve Ecker. These are types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are, excuse me, not, not afraid, afraid to, to be themselves. themselves. So when they are eventually con are confronted with these life situations, they are not in shock and we'll have an idea on how to approach it. All right, so what, what we're doing here today, just to kind of reintroduce us. So this is episode one of the Breaking the Cycle podcast. We've done some shows in the past, just live shows on Instagram and Facebook. And today, this is all about the start of the podcast. We're kind of reinventing it. It's a rebirth of Breaking the Cycle, keeping it going. And today, just before we even get into it, and I'm gonna tell you this right now, I'm a little concerned about more questions. I have no clue. Any of the questions they're going to be asking me, I don't know what they're going to be about. I, don't, I have no idea. And they're going to put me on the spot. This will probably be a, a few parts to this because 17 questions, I'm guessing we're going to get to a few of them today. And the first few episodes here of the Breaking the Cycle podcast, we will add, we'll just keep chipping away and add a chunk of those questions. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, but who wants a starting joke? So here's how it goes with jokes on, on Breaking the Cycle podcast, in case you don't know. They come up with some cheesy ass freaking jokes. They ask the joke. It's kind of a riddle, a joke that you need to figure out the answer. And I get 10 seconds to come up with the answer to the joke. And if I get it within 10 seconds, I get a point. If I need a hint, I get a half point. If I get ridiculous amount of hints, I get a quarter point. But if I get it immediately with zero seconds, if I just know the answer right away, I get one and a half points. But before we get to a joke, let's just do a quick reintroduction of who we are. Who we are. And because this is technically episode number one of the Breaking the Cycle podcast, so if any listeners on all the different podcast platforms, platforms I didn't know the word. How did you know I didn't know the word? I literally didn't I know the word. I heard you like hesitating. So. But I didn't even finish the word. Platform. I was going to say that all the podcast uh, places, and she somehow knew I wasn't going to know what the hell I was talking about. I, platforms. I, heard, I also I have, it's also going to be on YouTube where there's you can have have followers on YouTube. Okay. Stop saying, Stop saying followers. Just there recently, subscribers. Followers. Just, it's a follower, first of all, just not a follower. There's a subscriber. Y'all two are some hillbillies. Or you click shit. the subscribe button, not the follow button. Same shit. No, it's just yes. recently you went to this. What do you, what do you call YouTube? this? You know the this this symbol. What symbol? I'm not reading your jokes. So don't worry if you have them there. What do you call that? Hashtag. That is called a pound symbol. Oh yeah, it could be both. That's a pound, not a hashtag. Hashtag? Well, like, never mind. All right, so we are the Freak Family. Tyson, how old are you? What grade are you in? I am 12 years old, and I am in grade age 12. 
age 12. He is 12 years old. We live here. We live. He's 12 years old, and that's how old he is. And he's Tyson. How old are you? What grade are you in? I am nine years old. You're nine years older? Holy shit. You learn something new every day. I am in grade, well. Grade nine years old. Grade nine years old. Because we do home lifing. If you didn't know, if we don't do homeschooling. We do well, home lifing. Why is this not showing up? I want to say something about the follower video. subscriber thing for YouTube. Just recently, he went to this YouTube seminar thingy and they were literally teaching him stuff on YouTube and he came out still saying follower. I know. Like, I told him he needs to go back there. Who calls them followers? You all get some, you all get upset about that. Because it makes me mad. Everyone says subscribe. If you use You're YouTube, like some Kitty Karens. You say, You're like some Kitty Karens over YouTube verbiage. Chill. Chill? Chill. Chill. So, chill out, boy. We have, been, we have business from home. We work from home. They do lifing and schooling from home. We are into training. We train every day. We play with guns and we read books and we have some freaking fun. There are some older episodes. You can go and catch some of those back on YouTube. They won't be on this podcast platform if you want to just hear some more about that. But we are going to be starting fresh. That's why I figured what better way than for kids to be able to hear what do your kids really want to know from you? What kind of deep, dark, dirty secrets they want to know about? I have no clue where we're going with this. We're about to find out. I'm a little fucking nervous. Okay, so now can I say my joke? Let's hear it. Get my note what kind out. of shoes do robbers wear? What kind of shoes do robbers wear? No, we're not. No, we can't do it. We have to give them. What's so? Wait, wait, you gotta say the question clearly. You were mumbling when you said the question. You have to wait Make for. Make sure you're clear. You have kind of stalling technique. You have to wait for at least two stalling techniques to happen, and then you do the timer, or else it Tell me the question again. Count. What kind of shoes? It's not a brand. It's a type of shoe. What kind of shoes do robbers wear? What kind of shoes okay. do robbers wear? Thief, theft, fast, oh. garbage, trash, base, steal, stolen. Anything? My, any, on any track? Only the shoes, horseshoes, fast shoes, sneakers, sneakers. Yep. Because they sneak. Oh, I got it. So I get a point. Yep. That's you one for two one. Seconds left. That's one for one. That's hey, someone answered sneakers. Someone said running. Someone said sneakers. All right. So here we go. That's a, that's a point for me. One out of one. I I have my new score sheet, so I could finally write it down. All right, so here let's let's get into it. Let's let's, and I'm guessing you each we work together. So they've had an assignment, part of their home life and assignment was to create these interview questions, uh, and they're supposed to be very deep, intellectual, multi-pointed questions with follow-up questions that are going to lead to some conversations to really know about what's going on. And I want to, I'm curious to know what do these kids want to know about me that maybe they don't know or they want to know more about, want to hear about again because maybe they knew about it in the past and forgot about it. And I'm guessing these might be some questions that your kids want to know about you. So let's let's hear. Let's let's who's got who's got the first question for me? Right. Hey. Who's leading this interview here? You got the first one. Oh shit. So I personally created this one myself. What motivated you not to be like your father? I know that you said when you were growing up you didn't want to be like your father, but what motivated you to do that? Let me ask you a question. I just asked you a question. I know, but um, this is going to answer your question by me asking you a question. That doesn't make any sense. Sure it does. Yes, it does. It if does. you were a kid mm -hmm. and your father never played with you, mm -hmm. not a single time, and you lived with him for 19 years, or your father never taught you anything, never had a conversation with you, never hugged you, never told you he loved you, never tucked you into bed, it's tug. It is tuck. It is tugged. These two knuckleheads tugged. think you get tugged into bed, like T-U-G-G. -G. It is tuck. T-U-C-K. No, no, I think it's T-U-G. Like tuggy, like tug on a rope. You're not tugging someone in bed. You're tucking them in. Tucking them in the covers. Let's see. It I is tuck. I got under the covers myself. It is tuck. I don't know. So let me ask you, all that, all that that I just mentioned, this reporter, nice pencil there. Just don't poke your eyeball out with it. Would you be motivated? She wrote 
Would right. you be? Would you be? We're not on that. Would you be motivated to be like that? Would you want to be like that kind of person? When you saw that, would you want to be like that kind of person when you got older? No. Would you like that kind of life? Would you want anyone else to ever experience a life like that? No. If you had kids, would you want to treat them the same way? No. No. Why not? Because it's that's, just not, that's not the way to live. So, there's motivation right there. Shit not wasn't really. fun. It, Shit it sucked. wasn't positive motivation, but it's still motivation. You can get motivated by, like, hell yeah, you can get motivated by not positive stuff. What did I tell you? But, you can get motivated by not positive shit. So, it's not hard to get motivated. But here's the thing. Some people would use that as an excuse to be a loser or an asshole in life. Like, then they'll... That's why this show is called Breaking the Cycle. Because someone eventually has to break the cycle. What do you think his father was like? Probably like that. Same exact way. A drunk, alcohol, gambling, not spending any time with him. The same way. And what do you think his father was like? Same way. It was a cycle. It was a pattern. It was well, a pattern. That was back in 18... In the 1800s. 18, 18, 18, so eventually, 18, someone needs to make be the one to break the cycle, or else it would just keep chaining on. Imagine that's how we acted. How miserable your life would be. That. We probably would have never started homelifting. We. No, you wouldn't. We would be wanting to go to school. That's. Because not. To that's what school is created for. You know, it's, it's, it's fucked up that during like the corona, that they said child abuse went up. Because now kids are just spending more time at home. So that just means like they needed school to get them away from their parents. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> that was not camera. So, does that answer your question? Or do you have anything else you want to know about that? Does that put any more thought to that? Is that a good enough thing? It was a pretty... Yeah, that was a solid, pretty, pretty solid answer. That was, that was rock hard. All right, what else we got? What's the All next right. question? All right, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too yeah, bad. Yeah, the, the questions are going to be getting better as we go. And there forward. could be some basic questions too, like whatever, like the look up any. You could have basic questions about whatever. It doesn't yeah. have to all be so like you got to kick. I'm already, I'm, I'm already over here sweating now answering these questions. You got me in the freaking right. hot seat. My why? armpits are sweating. See? Why? Here, here, touch. <laughs> all right, what we got? Why did you start like personal training and like a whole like workout business and all that? Why why did you start that? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I why why did you start like personal training and learning about exercises and how you told us one day that you were researching in books, reading and all that? Why did you do that? So the first the easy answer would be this, and then I'm gonna take it back even further. So the easy answer is this. When I was in the Marine Corps, you start having people that you're in charge of and they start not getting good scores on fitness tests. Like for phys we have to do a physical fitness test, a PFT. I think every six months, there's like pull-ups, crunches. I actually might have it in my book. A three mile run and whatever else. So they start, you start not getting great times on the thing. And guess what? If you're in charge of people, you're going to be the one. Leadership, right? Accountability. You're in charge of your people. You two screw something up. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you read, if you've read the dichotomy of leadership, they say how to balance out. The balance leadership. it out. How you can't go too extreme on either end of the spectrum. So, I first got certified while I was still in the Marine Corps in San Diego because I wanted to learn how to train my Marines better to get in better shape. And as I'm doing it, I'm starting thinking, you know what? I like training myself. Training makes me feel good. I train every freaking day. I like being strong. I like being fit and athletic. And then I start training these other people. I start seeing them get results. And like, holy shit, I have a talent here. I have a gift of getting people to do shit that they thought was impossible. Taking from things that look impossible and turning it into done. Going from impossible to done. People who think they have no chance or no hope or it's the end of their line and becoming done. So it turns into much more than just personal training. Personal training is the least... Like the fitness side of personal training is the least thing that I would focus on in personal training. It was really a personal development program. It was a coaching program, much more than a fitness and nutrition program. It just happened to be fitness and nutrition was one of the foundations that helped them become the freaking savage, helped them kill the inner bitch that was in them to unleash the beast. And it happened to happen through fitness and all this other stuff. So it happened, it started with me training Marines that I was in charge of and training myself and then saying, holy shit, I could turn a business into this. So I started planning. Probably two years before I came out of the Marine Corps, I started planning 
my fitness business, how I was going to run it, a gym that I was going to own one day. And I knew I was going to have to start as an employee in a gym, just as a personal trainer to learn the business more, get experience, learn marketing, learn more about training and study more, get smarter. So I had a whole plan. I already knew about Peak Physique Gym, what it was going to look like, how it was going to run years before I ever got out of the Marines and years before it ever opened. When I came out of the Marines, I still worked in a gym for like four or five or six years as a personal trainer on the floor. Like you see those guys walk uh, around like, UFC gym. Like DJ Reed. Just snatches up in ditches, man. Yes. Like the trainers you see walking around the gym. And so okay. then I then left there and started doing in-home training on my own. Said, oh, you know what? I could take this to the next level. I could start my own thing and work for myself and be an entrepreneur. I was always needed to be a little more free and wanted to obviously make more money, but also can do things my way, not the way someone else wants to do it. So I started doing in-home training and then me and the Russian opened up the actual location, Peak Physique, personal training, boot camp, and boxing. But the fitness side was the least part. It was really like so much deeper level of coaching than that. But I'm gonna rewind back to the childhood. So this ties even into the first question. I started working out when I was a kid. Cause when you're a kid, if you're not playing any sports, I was only on a baseball team for three years because the coaches in the little league knew I was pretty good. So they let me play for free. You have to pay to sign up for leagues to get the uniform. My parents weren't paying for anything. They weren't paying for a dime. So the coaches would pay for me to get me on their team, basically bribe me to be on their team. They said, Hey, you want to be on our team? I said, well, my parents aren't signing me up. You have no money. And they said, don't worry, just come on. And so I'd go and play and I was pretty good. One year I was the best on the team. The next year I was the worst on the team because they moved me up to a higher league and I was like the youngest one. I was already the youngest one in my grade. I was the youngest in my grade every year except two kids were younger than me. Then when I was pretty good at baseball, they moved me ahead. So now I'm playing with kids a grade ahead of me. I'm already younger than the kids in my grade and I'm playing with kids a grade ahead of me. So I was like over two years difference, two and a half years difference of the kids I'm playing with. That's a big difference in your kid. So I got, I sucked that year. Our team won one game. We had one win and like 16 or 19 losses or some shit. That's but then that gave me experience playing and sucking and being with such better kids that the third year I was back to being the best kid on the team in that same league because now I had experience and caught up. Now the kids in my group were just coming into that league. I was already there for a year. So anyway, all that to go back to saying that was the only sports I ever played. The only activity I ever played other than throwing a, base, a, a tennis ball on the side of my house. The side of our house in Suffolk, New York was my best friend. It was the only friend I had. Oh, we, I never even asked you which side. The main side, right there where the door is. There's a little cement part on the bottom where the windows are. That's I'd bounce I it. I'd bounce it off that part at different angles, and sometimes it'd go over, and there used to be a fence behind it. If it went over, I'd try and dive and catch it, like save it from being a home run, or if it went over, it was a home run. So I'd pitch it against air for hours and hours. But I had no activity. I didn't, I didn't know how to work out. You guys train every day for years since you were born. If I did that, I don't know where I'd probably be, but it's not the way it was meant to be. It's meant to be exactly how it happened. But I needed to get some of that aggression out. You're especially a boy. Look at every day. What do you, what do you say every night before we go to sleep? Can we fight? Can we fight? You gotta speak louder because this is the mic. Can we fight? It says, can we fight? We do a crazy time. He wants to fight. He wants to get out that aggression. Boys especially need this like, and I'm, we're- Rough housing. Rough housing. It's more than rough housing. We're brawling there. We are fighting. And then you and me do the midgy mode version of it where it's not as violent, but we have some fun and I, and I choke yeah, out. Yeah, they last of no. Like yeah. two or three days ago, I accidentally kicked him in the head. Literally, we're sitting there doing grappling, and he just, dude, just kicks me right in the fucking side of the head, like a head kick. <laughs> but anyway, it's a brawl, because we need to get that aggression out, especially young boys need it, and they, especially with a positive rail role model, their father, they need that contact, not from the priests or any other weird, funky little predator contract, contact in your little white vans, none of that shit, but they need that with their, especially their father or father figure or positive male role model. I had none of that. So you know what I would do? I liked boxing. I need to get this aggression out. And I'm a kid ready to fucking explode because there's nothing going on. I would take my mattress. And it was a pissy mattress because I used to piss the bed until I was like... Second grade. At least second grade. Okay, that kind of ruined another one of the questions. Well, I pissed the bed. So I would take the mattress and put it, lay it up against the like side of the and wall. And that's what I would punch as a heavy bag. That was a heavy bag I had. All this home gym you have, this professional home gym, we literally in this house, you must have 12 different heavy bags, different types. If you count the bobs, the stand-ups, the ones hanging out there, all the water balls, the water ball out Why front. 10? Over 10. Over 10 different types of heavy bags here to punch. I had nothing, I had no gym, no weights. 
I used to have to take baskets and buckets and put them on a broomstick and try to bench press it. They nothing. did that in Diary of Wimpy. Nothing. I try to find out whatever I can because I have this, I know I have this aggression in me. I need to get it out. And that's what made me turn into a criminal when I was older. But anyway, I punched this pissy mattress and it was stinking. And it was an old mattress that was like 20 something, 30, who knows how many years old. It was in the house when we moved there. They just left the mattress there and we kept it. Some other people's mattress that they already had for years. And then I pissed the shit out of it. And so it was so old, it was ripping. You know, mattresses have these springs in it. The old ones are not like these fluffy little mattresses have with like that little memory foam that it no, knows no, your body it's... and it supports your spine. It cooks you fucking dinner and all this other stuff that mattresses do nowadays. Two mattresses ago, mine had springs. This thing had springs that were sticking out of the fabric. So I'd sleep and sometimes if I rolled over the wrong way, it would like stick into like, I remember one time it went like into this like little, little meaty part underneath your arm and like punctured it and went into the skin and was like bleeding. So that's what I would punch. And if I didn't punch it the wrong way or the wrong side, I'd be punching these freaking springs. But it didn't matter. I need, that was what I needed to get aggression out. So I knew that fitness and training and intensity is like a gateway. It's like a retreat. It's like needed to get out. So that all ties back into why, I, not only why I started training, but why we trained the way we did. If you don't remember, I don't, you guys don't remember much about peak physique in New York. All I remember. But how we used to train. Have you, do you remember how we used to train? It was not like people train in a regular gym. It was like basically the project. It was how we trained. There was a lot of shit talking, a lot of intensity, a lot of craziness. A lot of so people. Knowing that that's what it, it was going to take. Knowing that fitness has such a bigger impact than just getting in shape. Like there's such, it like literally will save your freaking life. It's the foundation of everything. That discipline, also the discipline it gives you, keeps you out of trouble, keep, gets rid of that aggression. So there, does that answer your question? That was a hell of an answer. Lee, yes. That, that was an answer. That was a, like... I bet you when you asked that question, you didn't know you were going to be talking about... That was like 10 minutes of an answer. That I bet you when you asked that question, you didn't know you were going to get an answer about a pissy mattress. Yes. Every, but, everything we were talking about the... Earlier when you were talking about the marine stuff, how, how much... Is this a new question or is this a follow-up? No, this is a follow-up. All right. How many... How much percentage of the people that you were in charge of in the Marines do you think don't train anymore, aren't disciplined anymore, just slobs? That was... That, Jeez, that was went so downhill crazy. real fast. It went from just, don't train so much anymore, maybe fell off just slightly, to maybe not so disciplined, to don't work anymore, to mother freaking slobs. Like, holy shit, that went downhill fast. How much percentage of that group do you think? I still stay in touch with... A few on like social media, like Facebook and stuff here and there, just like short contact and probably not as much as it should be, much as I would like. And I'm actually doing an episode of the Steve Eckert podcast, episode three, that's going to be coming out in a few weeks from now, is all about this military on uh, veteran on uh, veteran, like hate and, and great, basically not sticking together and, and after they get out and going like that there's so much veterans and and hate going on there it's, it's gonna be a huge me uh, show about veterans coming up in a, in a couple that's gonna be for another month now but recording it soon remember that hate analysis i was found about that guy saying oh you probably never even entered the marines and you were you talking about that hater and you said he was probably a veteran himself because of the way he was talking no because he said you weren't in you weren't a grunt. Yeah, but we'll get into all that in a, in a few, like a, a, the ones like Rifleman or a Tanker or something like that. And so, yeah, we're going to discuss the veterans in, I think, in a future episode. But that was a good question. And the percent, what percent? Of oh, too so many. Asked. That's right. Too many of them. How many of them fell off? Too many of them fell off. Too many of them fell off. And you know that military veteran suicides... There's 22, I don't know if it's still the same, it was for a while, 22 veterans kill themselves every day. Every, every day. day. Pretty sure that's the, I pretty thought sure it it's every, every day. week. Pretty sure it's every day. We'll double check that. I know the number used to be like lower, now it's like 22. I don't know what it is now, but it's somewhere around there. Because you're in there, your whole day is structured for you. Someone's always telling you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You have this brotherhood. And then you get out or whatever else. A lot of you go to war. Maybe you, get, you have some issues or whatever it is. Even if you don't, you, even if you didn't go to combat, you get out and now it's just thrown, you're out in the real world like, holy fuck, what do I do now? And you're just lost and confused and you're no longer with your unit. You're back at home and everyone went their own separate way. And 
There you go. We're going to have a lot of different, a lot of future episodes Wait. on that. Yes, 22 a day is correct. So that seems like that's still the freaking number. That's crazy. Think about that. 22 yes. veterans kill themselves every day. I know many, 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 many personally that have. Many. One of, the, one of those guys' videos was talking about at the first facility. Or that from the Soviet Yeah, he was talking about a Navy SEAL, like a, some like high ranking commander that, that killed himself. No, yeah, the suck fest before. On Christmas Eve. There's a Marine in the project. Like right over the project. Oh, yeah, you told that me about himself, it. That like a year ago. So, does that answer your questions? Yes, that Perfect. answers. All right, what do we got next? Let's get another one or two in. We want to keep these episodes pretty okay. 20, 25, 35 minutes, somewhere around there. Why, where's the timer? You just used to show a timer. Or Zoom does. This. All right, what do we this, got? You have one more each, I think. Like a Wait, what about... Oh, yeah, let's get a joke in here. Let's see which one. Come on, come on, what do we got? All right, why did a fan bring a rope to the ball game? Why did a fan bring a rope to a ball game? Like a, like a fan of someone, not like an actual spinning fan. Just, I'm mean, going just ask a question. What's quite now you confused me on the question. All right, all right. He's still like explaining why, this why? question. Why? Really poke my eyeball out over there. <laughs> why did a fan bring a rope to the ball game? Why did a fan bring a rope? It's because it was a tie game. It was an untied game. It was tied. The score was tied. To tie the score. That that's all the same. That, I got that immediately. I know, but... That's I, one and a half. Bullshit. I got that immediately fine, just because one word was off. Fine. So I got 2.5 points out of two. I'm on a roll today. All right, next this, question. This is next. Like and just to be clear, this was, this, is, this, this was called 17 things your kids are dying to know about you. So this is going to be spread over several episodes because if we did all 17, we'd be here for like five hours because I have some very long-winded answers talking about pissy mattresses and shit like that. So... All right, question number three. Who's up? You? This what is we got? Personal and set, fun. Up clear, sit up straight, sit up. This is a clear. personal fun question, but I just wanted to know. All good. Let's hear it. What was your first pet? My first pet. You know what? Every story you're going to hear, I'm going to give you the quick answer, and then it's going to turn into some fucked up childhood story. Yes. My so first pet. My first pet was a dog, a black lab named Major. Major, probably when I was young, first grade, second grade, maybe even, yeah, probably first grade, second grade, maybe even before like kindergarten even, somewhere around there. Do you remember that? And so we had this dog, Major. I'm a little kid. Maybe I'm like four or five years old, six years old. I don't know the year. I don't know. I have to figure out when that was, what the time frame was. But it was like a puppy, like not even a year old, maybe a year. Cause he, I don't remember him ever being tiny, so let's just say he was eight months old when we got him. We had him for a couple of years, but I'm a little kid, four years old, five years old, that is pissing the bed, that has no leadership or role model at all, so I don't know how to teach a dog or train a dog. The dog is just there. I'll, I don't remember playing with it that much. I played with it a little bit, but he wasn't trained. I don't even remember him being... Well, how did you guys even get it? I don't even know. Maybe my brother. I think my brother found it somewhere or someone gave it to him. My brother brought it home. My brother was 10 years older than me. I don't really remember how we got it. Did my father get it? I have no clue where we got it from. So we had it for a couple of years and I don't know how to train it. I don't even remember that much playing with it. I don't remember any good, fun times of the childhood. But so we had this dog for a couple of years, but you start getting attached to it. It's still your dog. So I remember when we when it was gone, we were sad, like all upset about it. And probably like my sisters were all crying about it. So we had this dog major. My father wanted to get rid of it after we had it for, I don't know, a couple of years. The time rate rise, I can't hold hold me to it. I'll have to ask my brothers and sisters if they remember. Probably three years, four years you have a dog. So you're gonna get attached to a dog. Even if you're a little kid and you don't even train it. If the dog was not trained, you would chew stuff up. Look, our dogs chew shit up still. They're only a year old, but still. The dog wasn't very well trained. But my father didn't want to probably have to buy dog food for it, take it to the vet. Because even though there's six kids, what do we really do? I don't know. We, would, we, don't, we really didn't walk him. We would walk. Me and my older sisters would walk him sometimes. I don't know. So my father didn't want him anymore. So he kept trying to get rid of him. 
And we never did because these are dogs, the family dog. The dogs are part of the family. Shit, I have a tattoo of a dog on my hand. I like dogs better than I like most freaking humans. Most. Most and all is very different. And over here, we more than most humans and automatically assume what, that it's you? That's not the attitude that we have around here. So one day, my father worked, we lived in Rockland County, like 45 minutes in the suburbs, like north of New York City. So New York City's here, Rockland County's like up here somewhere, 45 minutes away. My father worked in the Bronx, which is right near New York City, somewhere around there. Or he worked in Manhattan, but he'd have to go through the Bronx or something. So he one day decided to take Major to work with him just for fun because he wanted to bond with the dog because he's just such a really, you know, loves spending time with the dog. He wanted to, to take the dog with him to work. And he gets home without the dog. And we're like, where's the dog? We, got, we were in school. We got home from school. The dog's gone. Father gets home from work, drunk, late that night probably, says the dog's gone. Like, what happened? He's like, oh, I was at a stoplight coming home from work and he jumped out the window and I tried to chase him, but I was in traffic and I couldn't leave the car and he ran off. That's what he said. The dog ran away at a stop sign. Conveniently ran away, ran away at a stop sign. And then like a week later or sometime later, not too long later, I don't know how long, week, two weeks, we're visiting my grandmother who lives in Yonkers, which is Westchester, which some ways you get there, you're right near the Bronx. That's when he said the dog ran away. We're all in the car, six of us in the station wagon. Back, back then, by the way, there's no car seats. I'm in the back of a station wagon, just bouncing around, looking out the back of a window, sitting on a flat platform. I'm in a seat. Just, you know, the back of a station wagon, a flat board. Yeah. Like, just sitting there. Two or three of us would be back there. Driving around on the highways. No seat belts. No, no, no car seats. We're at a stop sign, like somewhere near the Yonkers or Bronx or something. And we see a loose dog, a black dog, running around the streets. And we're like... I think that's that's major. We see a dog over there, just a loose, wild, stray dog. And the Bronx probably has a lot of stray dogs, but whatever. I don't know if it was him or not. But it's close enough to the size and shape, and it's a black dog. He said he lost it somewhere in that area. And we're like, we think that's him. And my father's like, no, 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 that's not him. And he takes off and drives away. No, I could tell that's not him. I know what he looks like. That's not that wasn't him. He drives away. So you could think what you want on the story. There's no none of this. There's no you, you could be like our president, say truth over facts and science over fiction or whatever, but you could put two and two together and figure out what happened with that story. Did that, that answer your question about the first pet? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is why now this house is like a fucking zoo. We at one point last, like two or three weeks ago, when there were some bunnies that we found that were born, there was hamsters that had like 20 babies, and then all the dogs we have and snakes and hamsters we already had and turtle. There was like over 20 something pets in this house. At 22. One, at one time, which is just... Nuts. So I guess that's why I don't mind having as many pets as we want because I had mine ditched in the Bronx when I was a kid, my first pet. So now we can have 10 dogs. I don't give a shit. Let's get a third dog then. Get some more responsibility then. <laughs> yeah, that should, you, that should you down real fast. <laughs> All right. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Let's but get one more in. One more in. Wasn't there like a dog named Dixie or something? Wasn't there one of those? Wasn't there a dog I think that's going to have to be the question. Dixie. No, Dempsey. That was Dempsey with the boxer we had after that. My, my brother brought home from the Marines. She had some kind of like, she lost all movement in one of her back leg when she was like three or four years old and just had to drag it around. You guys didn't amputate it? We didn't. Well, we also didn't have any, couldn't have any money for any surgery or even take it to the vet. And they, we took it to the vet and said, you could get surgery. We could try to fix it, but we had no money. I don't know, something happened to it. And she died when she was like, when I was this 11th grade, I think. And she died when she was like seven or eight years old, like young, the boxer. Just came from school one day and the dog was dead there on the ground. So that's why we have shitloads of pets there. So, but I think that was, what was that, three solid questions. I didn't think that was enough for this episode. So we don't drag this on too long. We will continue these. Also another segment that is part of Breaking the Cycle is it's called, what's that, what's it called? We're gonna get to the segment today. Uh, we have another hit from the nosebleeds today? You gotta stop mumbling and holding your throat when you're talking. The hit, the another hit, hit from the nosebleeds where I take a screenshot of some haters or someone that was talking shit on the internet on one of my posts or comments and we bring it up here and we, we, we tag the person in that video and we have a discussion about it. We have some fun with it. We weaponize that stuff. And so we got some solid questions. We got the first three questions out of the way of 17 things your kids are dying to know about you. We will get part two of this on the next episode of the Breaking the Cycle podcast. This has been episode number one. Anything y'all two want to... Head them out with why go shut things down. No! Excuses! By the way, 
just in case you're wondering, they said no excuses. You couldn't even tell it. They are very, very normal children. I can't imagine where you get it from. But anyway, we need to roll. In case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. You are freaking awesome. Make sure to, to subscribe to the channel or follow the channel. <laughs> Shit, I said subscribe, actually. You two actually Sub got it through to no, me. Man. This is just sick. So this is never just miss sick. Out on any video. So make sure you follow, share this video with someone who needs to know about it, with whoever that might have some kids that needs to have these type of discussions with your kids or that your kids can watch stuff. Just maybe we want to bleep out some of the words because we have an issue with that. Anyway, in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. You are freaking awesome. No excuses. We will see you next time on Breaking the Cycle. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I never give it up. I never know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I worry about you. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I never give it up. I never know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you.